Hello, it's morning, Tuesday, the 28th of March, and it is early for me. It's 8 o'clock. Some days I just get up and get going. So, how are you? And you literally can tell me in the comments if you like to. Cheers. got my cow dog records um, cup going thinking about Michael teach the guy who runs the label he just recently uh, had, unfortunately went blind in one eye so my heart goes out to him for you know it's you know <laughs> what a thing to have to uh, make an adjustment to um Folks, I really appreciate this connection, and I really do appreciate how just just a great yes. The comments here, pe people are decent. People want to be decent. You know, I latest thing here is. Um, from Temple of Doom regarding uh, suicide. I do want to respond to this. You know, Temple of Doom, that's cool that that's how you feel. But I would never say that anyone else should do anything, much less this idea that we should be happy for someone who has committed suicide. I am a suicide survivor, so I know from first hand. Okay, I'm just speaking for myself. And one of the words that I... If you go back and watch every video I've made, you'll see where I consciously avoid telling people what to do or using the word, well, you should. That's a lo That word has purpose, but it's also a loaded gun. W pointed out that he says that he thinks I'm good with words. Well, I don't necessarily think that myself. I just try to express myself clearly, and I understand the power of language. Okay, and should very often implies shame. Oh, you should have done this. Should have done that. Or the other thing about it that I avoid, that I learned through working in social services and mental health and counseling, is the worst thing to do to a person that comes in their hour of need is to tell them, "Well, you should." do. There are instances where that is absolutely imperative, but generally speaking, that's a perfect example, if you're watching this, W, where I contour my words. I do not try to tell people what they should do. If you notice, I, always, I often say, it's just my opinion, this is my perspective. If there's something of value that I have to offer, It'll be up to the other person to receive it and find it. I can't make them. And should is one of those words that is often used to hurt people. I've just seen it so many times in my work as well as in life. So I thought I'd respond to that, you know. Ah. Uh. L.E., thank you ahead of time for um, wanting to send me those CDRs. It's really kind of funny as I've been working on this latest project and gearing up an, a, another project um, with James. I've been going through um, blank CDs, sending mixes home with the guys to study. And so they'll serve a purpose. Thank you very much, um, L.E., thank you. Hope everyone is doing okay. I do. I hope you all are doing all right. So, let's get to the music. So, in checking out the latest releases, as I always do, I went ahead and, and gave a good listen to the new Depeche Mode because the, the lead video off of it is misleading to me. 
It does not indicate how good this album is. Because I went ahead and listened to most of it online, and then I thought to myself, okay, let me grab this vinyl. Depeche, Depeche Mode, Memento, Memento Mori. You know, dedicated to the memory of Andrew, their um, deceased band member, Fletcher. Andrew Fletcher, is it? Now, I'm not a dedicated Depeche Mode fan, but I have Depeche Mode records. I never bought them dedicatedly. It's like if I come across stuff cheaply, then I've gotten it. So I've got several 12-inch singles. I really like the band. Never got to see them live. That was another thing that got me to buy this new one, is I watched clips from their recent show, I think it's out in California, on the 23rd of this month. They were, they're just, it's on YouTube. They're excellent. They're just killing it. You know, they're killing it. So the song from this, this is not the limited edition. When I went to buy this at Homer's, I asked them, did they even get a chance to get the clear vinyl? I said, we never even were told. If you look on Discogs, you see they're going for over $100 already. That would have been nice, but I'm glad to get the vinyl. The song that did it for me is the song, People Are Good. And I love what it's saying. These guys are, are badass. I really do like what Dave Gunn is saying in the lyrics. Because it's a reflection of the times. I keep telling myself that people are good. Whisper it under my breath. So I don't forget. <laughs> keep fooling myself that they do all they can. Sometimes they slip up, but it's not what they meant. That was a, that's a really cool way of just reflecting on just how fucked up everybody is and how everything is just completely ruined because of greed and the unnecessary focus on material goods. Yeah, it all goes together in my mind. So it's a double album, but uh, three sides and an etching. And I love the fact that Martin Gore has never shied away from letting people know, yeah, I'm, a, I'm, I'm black. Yeah, I'm a black man. Yeah, Depeche Mode. Martin Gore of Depeche Mode is, is black. But I'll point out, this is one of those little things about this world that we live in where things are imbalanced and some people don't see it. I see it glaringly like a, you know, like a thorn in the eye. The press, and I read, uh, over the years I've read a lot of press. If they refer to Martin Gore's um, race, they talk about him having mixed parents. You know, that's the polite way of saying we don't want to say he's black. When you're on this side of the fence, you notice this shit. Or at least what I do. <laughs> it's a really good record. Really good. Also, I'm glad I bought the vinyl because I see on a couple of comments online where people said they bought the CD and it distorts because and and interestingly enough before I bought the record I ripped the song off the off the internet a flack I know how to do it you know even even besides file sharing I know how to get music off the internet so I was able to get a flack file of people are good because I you know really liked it right? I said, oh that's that's a slamming beat that's that Depeche Mode sound today and the flak file is completely, it's a solid bar of information in when you see it on a, um, when I open it up in a, like a DAW, and it's like, untrained ears don't notice it. Un, I, I will, maybe on the CD you would, but on the flak file, it's like, this is way too hot. 
So I'm glad I got this, the, the vinyl because you have to cut it right in order for, or else the needle won't even play it. So I'm going on and on and on because this new Depeche Mode is really good. If they came to Omaha, I, I'm not traveling. Ron, if you see this, bless you, brother. I know you're playing in Kansas City. I don't want to drive. I'm, I don't have any plans of driving. I'd love to meet you. And I'd love to see Acid Mother's Temple again. I don't want to drive in the car for three hours. I don't. So I don't plan on it. Just a whole lot of reasons why I just am not into doing a lot of traveling right now. But, um... I'd love to see Depeche Mode. Man, they're killing it in these video the videos that are online. Um, it's great. I picked up three used albums as well. Real cheap. Because the the cost of a rep of a new album is ridiculous. It's sad. It's sad that we're in a world that is so locked in on the material and how it's just the folks that have got their hands on the power and the money not going to do anything to, to jeopardize that and so in reality no lives matter as Ice-T said in Body, body Count you know, we try to, we try, you know, when, the, let me just speak. When I saw those signs go up saying Black Lives Matter, I knew that it lost its, it had no value right then. It's a slogan, and it was, it was going to be a, a, a placard to placate those that don't know any better. It never worked for me. And it's true, no lives matter to the rich and powerful. No lives matter. So the three used albums I got, they were all really cheap. And I was happy about that. So that's why I bought this one. Because I will probably only play this once. But it's like it's sitting there. And I have Exception Records. And it's like, okay, go ahead and add it. Exception with the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra. This, um... Um... The Swedish Dutch Rick van der Linden is that Swedish? Anyway, this music and this band they would just do straight copies of um, of classical, and I can see where at first when this first happened that there was a bit of a novelty appeal to it, but. In the long run, most of this stuff is really just drab. But as I was looking at it in the in the used section, they only wanted five bucks for it. I said, "Well, that's what that's what it would be nice to still be paying for new records." I remember when that was the price. So I grabbed it. I put on one side of this, and actually, as it got to the second part or body part. Oh, that's that's not too bad. That's not that's not totally corny, and I like the cover, so I grabbed that. I grabbed this knowing what I was getting. Sonny Rollins, Nucleus. Now, Sonny Rollins is a jazz musician who reminds me a lot of my dad. Not just his playing, but his his mind. Um. So you got some of you folks. You know, I'm try. I, I try to under explain things that that need that are very true. So back in the day when I was a kid, in the sixties, the sixties and the seventies, the shit that black people had to go through just to do stuff that white people take for granted, like make records and gig and stuff like that. It was such a such an ordeal, and black musicians were were dealing with so much bullshit regarding double standards and racism that it infiltrates some of the music. So what I'm saying about this album is this. This is Sonny Rollins. He's made some amazing jazz albums before this. This came out in 
1975. Perfect time to illustrate what I'm talking about. I remember this time well. So this album is, is a mixed bag. It starts off with a very obviously corny crap song called Lucille, in my opinion. Okay, so don't get upset if you like Lucille. But to me, it's a real obvious nod at trying to get a middle-of-the-road audience. Hey, y'all, this, mu this music is safe. It's cool. It's sort of of the times, you know. It's crap. The next song is Gualigo. Again, this is Sonny where he is, to, it sounds to me like he's in a, it's a jive, it's a jab at the times. So you've got the music going this direction. He comes in and plays in a different key, you know, like was, was, was happening in some free music in avant-garde. But the way he does it on here, it's like, it's really obvious to me that if I'm not down with this. I think that's some bullshit, you know. And so, and you can hear it. And then when he does it, and then goes into the regular um, harmonic solo, it's like, yeah, he made a statement. I think that's cool. But again, it's like, interesting. I'm, this is my perspective. I, I'm certain there's a lot of reality here. So by the time we get to the last two tunes... He settles down to real business, okay? The third one is a good funk track, and the last track, Azalea, swings. And Sonny just goes ahead and plays his horn like he knows how to. Really glad I bought this. And it has great people on it. M. Tume is on here. Uh, Roy McCurdy on drums, Chuck Rainey bass, uh, Blackburn on guitar, George Duke. And Benny Maupin, Raul D'Souza, that's an all-star band. So the band is cracking. Like I say, when they swing, it swings hard. The punk tracks are good. But what I said, I'm sure, I'm certain it's probably true. That was Sonny Rollins making his comments about, about the industry and about the world. And what he has to do to make a living. <laughs> you know... When I do things, it takes a while for me to come down from them and review them. So I'm still mentally reviewing the Curly Martin um, celebration. Terrace Martin said some really important and deep things that if you don't know, you don't know. <clears throat> and he just really made it a good point to talk about how black musicians really suffered hard just to make that music like people don't know nowadays. And enough generations have come up since then that just like um, what uh, people are trying to erase slavery from history if people can cannot know these harsh facts they don't want to know but it makes a difference to know the truth about the harsh reality of the history of this of this nation and this planet fighting is stupid Fighting is stupid. Racism sucks. War sucks. There's no good reason for war now like there ever was. And yet, because of greed and because of people with entitlements and because they can do it, they're going to kill. They're just going to kill for what they want. That shit's fucked up. I'll say it every damn day. And if that makes you not want to watch my videos... That's cool with me. The other record that I bought, um, and I'm glad this was nice and cheap because um, I have their their first album, Madura. This is Madura number two, produced by James William Guercio, the guy that was behind Chicago, the band Chicago and all their hits. And I'm um, pretty sure he was involved with Dan Fogelberg, was he? And some other people. Anyway, there's another shot. Their first album is uh, the air shot of this, Madura. <clears throat> and this one here looks like they're um, flying in the back of an of a open airplane, or the cockpit's been open so they can take the picture. Anyway, I went ahead and grabbed this because it was cheap and because I had the other one. 
this is a strange mix, not strange, but it's that American mix where there's a whole lot of country on here, but at the same time there's this jazz. And on this one they do Joe Zawinul's Dr. Honoris Causa. And they interpolate it with Papa Was a Rolling Stone, which is weird, but it's really good. The thing is these guys can really play, you know, um, and it's the way that they mix it up, it's, I think it was probably, too, it was too much. I think it was too much for the audience to stay with. They'd be real country and then they'd be all weird and jazzy and it's like, you know. So I was glad to add this to the collection yesterday and cheaply so, Madura, number two. Okay. So keep talking, folks. Keep keep the lines of communication open. I haven't forgotten, as you can see, I haven't forgotten anything, you know. And so we encourage, we, I, speaking on behalf of the, the world and all decent people, I encourage all of us to find a way to be more decent to one another. There is no good excuse. There's no... I can't think of a good reason for shitty negative behavior towards one another. Excuse me. Come on, y'all. Okay. So, stay in touch. Let me know how you're doing.